Assalamu alaikum fam. We're going to continue our uh, reading of the Bible. This is the Jehovah's Witness version. Once we finish this version, we won't have to come back to it. However, for theoretical and also theological understanding, it's important to read it. And reading it out loud does help get you into the rhythm of biblical language, which is actually quite helpful if you're ever going to have a dialogue with someone who is a Jehovah's Witness when uh, it'll help. So if you don't have time to read it, you can listen to me read it while you clean your bathroom or do something like that. I don't know. Okay, so we're on Joshua chapter 10, picking up on number one. And it came about that as soon as Adonazedek, that the king of Jerusalem heard that Joshua had captured Ai, Okay, so Joshua captures Ai, and then devoted it to destruction. Okay, look at that. So even in the Bible, Joshua destroys a, a city. So, I, I, you know, this is always a good way to read it yourself, and that way when people make arguments against Islam, you will know how to answer with actual biblical uh, references. That just as he had done to Jericho and its king. Okay, so Joshua has attacked uh, Ai and Jericho. So if people say there's only violence in the Quran, well, look at what Joshua's done. So he had done to Ai and its king, and that the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were continuing in their midst. He became very much afraid because Gibeon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai. Oh, look at that. And all its men were mighty ones. Consequently, Adonizedek, the king of Jerusalem, sent to Hosham, the king of Hebron, and to Piram, the king of Jarmuth. And to Japhia, the king of Lachish. And to Debir, the king of Eglon. Saying, come up to me and help me. And let us strike Gibeon, because it has made peace with Joshua and the sons of Israel. At this they gathered together and went on up five kings of the Amorites. Okay, so five kings of the Amorites. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, these and all their camps. And they proceeded to camp against Gibeon and to war against him. Also, look, war, all right? Upon that, the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp at Gigal, saying, do not let your hand relax from your slaves. Come up to us quickly, and do save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites inhabiting the mountainous region have collected together against us. So Joshua went on up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the valiant mighty men. Then Jehovah said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. For in your hand I have given them. Not a man of them will stand against you. And Joshua proceeded to come against them by surprise. All night long he had gone up from Gilgal. And Jehovah went throwing them into the confusion before Israel. And they began to slay them with a great slaughter at Gibeon. And went pursuing them by way of the ascent of beth And slaying them as far as Ezekiah. And a Makada. Okay, so here, uh, they contend Jehovah is telling Joshua, don't be afraid. He's going to hand over his enemies to him. And here is a great slaughter. So Joshua was also militaristic and he took out his enemies. And it came about that while they were fleeing from before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Horon, Jehovah hurled great stones from the heavens up them as far as Ezekiah, so that they died. There were more who died from the hailstones than those whom the sons of Israel killed with the sword. 
It was then that Joshua proceeded to speak to Jehovah on the day of Jehovah's abandoning the Amorites to the sons of Israel. And he went on to say before the eyes of Israel, Sun, be motionless over Gibeon, and moon over the low plain of Ai Jalom. Accordingly, the sun kept motionless, and the moon did stand still until the nation could take vengeance on its enemies. So here they contend that Joshua called out to a call. I almost said called out to Allah. My sorry, my bad. Joshua called out to Jehovah um, that they want the sun and the moon to be still. Isn't that interesting? Is it not written in the book of Jashar, and the sun kept standing still in the middle of the heavens and did not hasten to set for about a whole day? And no day has proved to be like that one, either before it or after it, in that Jehovah listened to the voice of a man, for Jehovah himself was fighting for Israel. After that, Joshua and all Israel with him returned to the camp of Gilgal, Meantime, these five kings fled and went hiding themselves in the cave at Makeda. Okay, so the five kings was there now in a cave. Then the report was made to Joshua, saying, The five kings have found hidden in the cave at Makeda. In the cave... Oh, wait, yes, hidden in the cave. Hmm. At that, Joshua said, roll great stones up to the mouth of the cave and assign men over it to guard them. As for you men, do not stand still. Chase after your enemies, and you must strike them in the rear. Do not allow them to enter into their cities, for Jehovah your God has given them into your hands. Aha! So here, do not chase after your enemies and strike them at the rear, and don't allow them entry. And it came about that as soon as Joshua and the sons of Israel had finished slaying them with a very great slaughter, until these came to their end, and those who did survive of them escaped and went entering into the fortified cities, all the people then began to return to the camp to Joshua at Mekeda in peace. Not a man moved his tongue eagerly against the sons of Israel, then Joshua, this is interesting, then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out these five kings from the cave to me. At that they did so and brought out to him from the cave these five kings, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon. And it came about that as soon as they had brought out these kings to Joshua, Joshua proceeded to call all the men of Israel and to say to the commanders of the men of war that had gone with him, Come forward, place your feet on the back of the necks of these, look at that, place your feet on the back of the necks of these kings. So they came forward and placed their feet on the back of their necks. So look at that. Joshua saying, Hey, he's got these people. In the cave, five kings tells them, come on out, and then they put feet on the back of their necks. And Joshua went on to say to them, do not be afraid or be terrified. Be courageous and strong, for it is like this that Jehovah will do to all your enemies against whom you are warring. And after that, Joshua proceeded to strike them and put them to death and hang them upon the five stakes. Oh, would you look at that? Hmm. On five stakes. And they continued hanging upon the stakes until the evening. And it came about that at the time of the setting of the sun, Joshua commanded, and they went taking them down off the stakes and throwing them into the caves where they had hid themselves. Then they placed big stones at the mouth of the cave until this very day. Well, would you look at that? So he put their bodies inside the cave. So he kills them. Put, by putting them on a, on a spike and then tosses their bodies into the cave and seals it. Well, that's interesting. And Joshua captured Makeda on the day and went striking it with the edge of the sword. Striking it with the edge of the sword. As for its king, he devoted him and every soul that was in it to destruction. Oh. 
This is why it's important when you have someone, Christians say that Islam is violent. Well, here in Joshua, we see quite clearly. I mean, I don't mind reading it. I don't mind that Joshua did this to his enemies, but when people pearl clutch, it's almost as if they haven't read their own Bible. He let no survivor remain. So he did to the king of Makedah just as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all Israel with him passed on from Makedah to Libna and warred against Libna. Accordingly, Jehovah gave it also its king into Israel's hand. And they went striking it and every soul that was in it with the edge of the sword. They did not let a survivor remain in it. So they did to its king just as they had done to the king of Jericho. Next Joshua and all Israel with him passed on from Libna to Lachish and went camping against it and warring upon it. Okay, so he's a conqueror. Joshua is... He's taken out kings, and he's putting everyone to the sword. A very great slaughter, as was noted. Accordingly, Jehovah gave Lachish into Israel's hand so that they captured it on the second day, and they went striking it and every soul that was in it with the edge of the sword, according to all that they had done to Libna. And it was then, at Horam, the king of Gezer went up to help Lachish, so Joshua struck him and his people until he had let no survivor of his remain. Then Joshua and all Israel went with him, passed on from Lachish to Eglon, and went camping against it and warring against it. And they got to capture it on that day and began to smite it with the edge of the sword. And they devoted every soul that was in it to destruction on that day according to all that they had done to Lachesh. Then Joshua and all Israel went with him up from Eglon to Hebron and began to war against it. And they got to capture it and went striking it and its king and its all towns and every soul that was in it with the edge of the sword. He did not let a survivor remain, according to all that he had done to Eglon. So, he devoted it and every soul that was in it to destruction. Finally, Joshua and all Israel went with him, came back to Dibur, and began to war against it. And he got to capture it, and its king, and all its towns, and they went on striking them with the edge of the sword, and devoting every soul that was in it to destruction. He did not let a survivor remain, just as he had done to Hebron, so he did to Debir and its king, and just as he had done to Libna and its king, so he has Hebron, Libna, Debir, he's conquering many areas. And Joshua proceeded to strike all the land of the mountainous region, and the Negeb and Shef, she, what is this? Shefila, and the slopes, and all other kings. He did not let a survivor remain, and everything that breathed he devoted to destruction, just as Jehovah the God of Israel had commanded. And Joshua went striking them from Kadesh, Barnea to Gaza, and all the land of Goshen, and up to Gibeon. And Joshua captured all these kings and their land at one time. Because it was Jehovah the God of Israel who was fighting for Israel. After that, Joshua and all Israel with him returned to the camp of Gilgal. Well, 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 that's interesting. All right, look at that. So now we're in Joshua chapter 11. Very interesting. And it came about that as, the, as soon as Jabin, the king of Hazor, heard of it, he went sending to Jabab, the king of Madon, and to the king of Shimron, and the king of Akshaf, and to the kings that were to the north, in the mountainous region, and in the desert plain south of Chinnereth, and in the Shephala, and the mountain ridges of Dor to the west, the Canaanites to the east and the west, and the Amorites and the Hittites, and the Pezazites, 
and the Jebusites in the mountainous region, and the Hivites at the base of Hermon in the land of Mizpah. <laughs> that sounds funny. Land of Mizpah. <laughs> That's interesting. So they went out, they and all their camps with them, and people as numerous as the grains of sand that are on the seashore for multitude, and very many horses and war chariots. Then all these kings met together by appointment and came and encamped together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. At this Jehovah said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I am abandoning all of them slain to Israel. Their horses you will hamstring, and their chariots you will burn in the fire. And Joshua and all the people of war with him proceeded to come against them along the waters of Merom by surprise and to fall upon them. Then Jehovah gave them into Israel's hand, and they went striking them and pursuing them as far as populous Sidon and Misaphoth Maim, and the valley plain of Mizpeh to the east, and they kept striking them until they had not let a survivor of theirs remain. After that Joshua did to them just as Jehovah had said to him, their horses he humstrung, and their chariots he burned in the fire. More than that, Joshua turned about at the time and captured Hazor, and its king he struck down with the sword, because Hazor was before that the head of all these kingdoms. And they went striking every soul that was in it with the edge of the sword, devoting them to destruction. No breathing thing at all was left over, and he burned Hazor in the fire. And all the cities of these kings and their kings Joshua captured and went striking them with the edge of the sword. He devoted them to destruction, just as Moses the servant of Jehovah had commanded. Interesting. So, wow, that is... uh. Intense. Very interesting. So Joshua, I mean, he's snatching up kings left and right. Look at that. Interesting. 